Hello guys, so now we shall be discussing regarding the pericardium, the, regarding the different kinds of pericardium. Okay, we have got uh, something called as fibrinous pericardium, serous pericardium and all. So we shall uh, completely look in complete detail and we shall also discuss some of the clinical aspects related to that. Okay, so first of all, if you look at the picture over here guys, so this picture, this circular picture which I am drawing right now, right, so this is your developing heart. Okay. Now, important thing to remember is that surrounding this heart, whatever layer you have got is called as serous pericardium. Okay. So, let us say surrounding this heart, this layer which I am drawing right now, right. So, this part over here is called as your serous pericardium. Okay. Now, Surrounding the serous pericardium, you have got another pericardium over here. This is called as fibrinous pericardium. Okay. Surrounding this, you have got another layer of pericardium like this. This pericardium over here, which I am drawing with uh, the green over here. This is called as your fibrinous pericardium. Okay. So, here we have got two important things. One is the developing heart. Developing heart. We have got something called as a serous pericardium. We have something called as a fibrinous pericardium. Fibrinous pericardium. Now, in the next picture, how does the picture look? How does the picture look? Is that when the heart is developing, right? What will happen? This heart will push this serous pericardium down so when it is pushing the serous pericardium down what will happen overall when you see it will look as if there are two layers of serous pericardium right so exactly follow the same picture over here if in the developing heart this is how the developing heart looks this is how the developing heart looks and what it has done it has completely pressed this serous pericardium aside you see Previously, the serous pericardium which was surrounding it is now completely compressed. So, as a result, what is happening? The two layers of serous pericardium have come near to each other forming two layers over here. Okay. Now, where is the fibrinous pericardium? Fibrinous pericardium is not disturbed. Yes, this is your fibrinous pericardium over here. Fibrinous pericardium. So, as usually, you have got your fibrinous pericardium. Okay, right. So now this is a fully formed heart. This is a fully formed heart. Okay. Now in this, obviously there should be some kind of rotations. There should be some kind of developments over here. But whatever it is, this part over here is called as your fibrinous pericardium. This part over here is called as your this part over here is called as your fibrinous pericardium. Fibrinous pericardium and inner two layers are called as your serous pericardium. Now within this serous pericardium, this outer layer is called as the parietal layer or parietal layer of pericardium, parietal pericardium. Parietal pericardium and inner layer is called as your visceral pericardium. Visceral pericardium. So, these two layers, parietal pericardium and visceral pericardium, both of them together, right? So, both of these two layers together, you call them as serous pericardium. Serous pericardium. Okay? Now, what is the layer that is completely attached to the surface of the heart? The layer that is completely attached to the surface of the heart is visceral pericardium. Okay? Now, this visceral pericardium is completely attached to the surface of the heart. So, an other name that is given to the visceral pericardium and that is what is called as epicardium. That is called as epicardium. Okay. Next important thing is that within this, you have got this cavity over here. Between the two layers of serous pericardium, whatever cavity you have got here, this cavity you call it as pericardial cavity. Yes, this cavity you call it as pericardial cavity. Now, within this pericardial cavity, what are these red color dots which I am drawing? These are called as pericardial fluid. Okay, within the pericardial cavity, within the pericardial cavity, you have got 
fluid and this is called as pericardial fluid pericardial fluid how much amount of pericardial fluid do you have you have got around 50 ml of pericardial fluid okay if the pericardial fluid level is increased that condition you call it as pericardial effusion pericardial effusion that you call it as pericardial effusion okay so you have got 50 ml over here if it is increased normally you have got 50 ml in you and me if it is increased this is called as pericardial effusion now in the pleura also when i discussed there i told you that uh, pleural fluid right it is around 5 to 10 ml if that is increased that is called as pleural effusion if this is increased in the pericardium this is called as a pericardial effusion now if you look at the nerve innervation so how many layers do we have here first of all three layers outer we have got the fibrinous layer that is called as the fibrinous pericardium all of you know right after fibrinous pericardium we have got two serous layers what are the two serous layers one you call it as a parietal layer call it as parietal pericardium okay and third one is called as your visceral pericardium or also called as epicardium visceral pericardium okay now what i'm telling you is the fibrinous pericardium and the outer layer of the serous pericardium that is the parietal layer of the pericardium this is innervated by phrenic nerve it is innervated by which nerve it is innervated by phrenic nerve and remember one thing that this uh, layer is pain sensitive okay what is this this is a pain sensitive layer pain sensitive layer and in the same way the visceral pericardium over here this visceral pericardium is innervated by autonomic nerve and this is pain insensitive autonomic nerves of autonomic system okay autonomic nervous system and this is pain insensitive and this is what this is pain insensitive now what we shall do is that guys uh, within this serous pericardium there are two layers i told you right so we, we shall look at the differences between these two layers of serous pericardium okay so what are the differences that we can figure out between the two layers of pericardium so one is your parietal pericardium another one is your visceral pericardium parietal pericardium and the other one is your visceral pericardium okay visceral pericardium is also called as i told you epicardium is also called as epicardium now the first important thing first important thing is that parietal pericardium is adherent to what it is adherent to fibrinous pericardium so it is adherent adherent in the sense it is close to see parietal is close to what fibrinous so it is adherent to fibrinous pericardium first important thing here where is visceral pericardium adherent to visceral pericardium is adherent to the surface of the heart right so all of you look here this black color surface whatever is here this is called as the surface of the heart and this inner blue color layer this one right so this layer is adherent to what this layer is adherent to the inner surface of the heart i mean the outer surface of the heart which is also called as myocardium why why not epicardium visceral layer is itself called as epicardium so this epicardium is closely attached to the muscle surface of the heart that is called as myocardium right so this is adherent to myocardium of the heart myocardium of the heart second important thing second important thing is that from where does this parietal pericardium develop parietal pericardium develops from somatopleuric mesoderm right so it develops from somatopleuric mesoderm then where does this uh, visceral pericardium develop it develops from splanchnopleuric mesoderm it develops from splanchnopleuric 
mesoderm if you remember when i was discussing the topic of lungs there also i told parietal layer right pleura there are two pleura parietal layer and visceral pleura so parietal pleura is developed from the somatopleuric and visceral pleura was developing from the splanchnopleuric mesoderm i told you right the same things here also next third important thing what is the third important thing third important thing is that parietal layer is innervated by what fibers i already discussed i think it is innervated by phrenic nerve phrenic nerve is what somatic or autonomic it is somatic okay so it is innervated by somatic fibers somatic nerve fibers whereas this is innervated by autonomic fibers autonomic fibers okay so that is innervated by somatic and this is innervated by autonomic fourth important thing i already told you this is sensitive to pain sensitive to pain and this is insensitive to pain insensitive to pain so these are the basic two uh, structures which you have to remember here guys so at the end you just have to remember these points between the parietal as well as the visceral pericardium these will be more than enough so this is also called as epicardium it is adherent to the fibrinous pericardium whereas it is adherent to the myocardium next important thing it is it is developing from the somatopleuric mesoderm it develops from the splanchnopleuric mesoderm okay and innervation is somatic fibers here it is autonomic fibers so this is sensitive to pain and this is insensitive to pain so these are the some of the important things which you need to know here this is all uh, you need to know regarding the parietal as well as the visceral uh, pericardium so thank you so much for watching my video goodbye